Newt. So last time around we talked about how Mitt was the man, he was going to run away with the nomination. But here comes Newt Gingrich, winning South Carolina, polling well in Florida, and what in the world is going on? Now look, I get it, I have a conservative friend, and yes I have a few of them, who says, look, it's not that the right is really that enamored with Gingrich, it's just that they resent the way the elite is trying to jam Mitt Romney down their collective throats. I get that. I also get that there are a lot of people on the right who do like Gingrich because he's a Fox News conservative. He ticks liberals off, and for a certain type of conservative, it's this, rather than policy, rather than actual governance, which is job run. Uh, their hearts start to beat a little faster when Gingrich talks about his opponents as being sick and depraved. Go nude! All right! But let's talk about depravity for a minute here because the one thing that fascinates me about Gingrich as a candidate is his extensive personal baggage. There was a meme going around on the internet last week with a picture of a grinning Gingrich uh, bearing the legend, family values, using daughters from your first wife to convince everyone that your second wife is lying about your third wife. And even conservatives themselves are jumping on this bandwagon with R. Emmett Terrell Jr., founder and editor-in-chief of the conservative American Spectator, comparing Gingrich to Bill Clinton and writing that Gingrich's public record, quote, is already besmeared with tawdry divorces and there are private encounters with the fair sex that doubtless will come out. If I have heard of some, he wrote, you can be sure the Democrats have heard of more. <laughs> Now, maybe Terrell's just uh, shilling for the GOP, GOP elite, but consider what conservatives surrender if they were to actually nominate Gingrich this year. For decades now, the right has used the family values canard as an electoral club, claiming that conservatives are somehow more moral, have greater personal character, and as a result, are more fit to lead the nation. But if Gingrich is the nominee, what we are seeing is the end of family values, the end of that line of attack. If Gingrich is nominated, it's a de facto admission that character doesn't matter, that family values, as the term has been defined by conservatives for at least a generation, is no longer an electoral issue and is no longer an electoral strategy. Uh, it's a repudiation also of the religious conservatives who do care about family values, a declaration by the non-religious base that we don't care about it, or at least not this time around. But if conservatives do nominate Newt, they may be ceding the election to Obama because to the extent that voters at large care about family values, it may be because conservatives have made such an issue out of it over the past few decades. Uh, conservatives have tried to make people care about family values. And if those people do care, Newt is toast. Liberals have always thought the family value business was a bunch of bunk, uh, and that conservatives would voluntarily abandon this outpost is both funny and telling, because either family values are important or they aren't. And if they aren't, let's put it to rest right now. Let's stop talking about it. Let's start talking about policy. Let's start talking about ideas. Let's start talking about issues rather than faith and morals and family values. That'd be a good day for America if we started doing it. Conservatives may be hastening that day along, whether they want to or not.